Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tyke Schooling. In this session of the video, we are actually going to talk about the blood supply of skin, which is very necessary to maintain as it uh, it is maintains your skin and appendages, nutrition supply and help in the thermoregulation. We'll be talking about the thermoregulation as well in this case because this is related to your glomus bodies. So let's get started. Remember this one. This diagram shows the part of your skin. So your skin, this part is your subcutaneous. Subcutaneous I can show here. There's a lot of tissue out here. This is your dermis part. And the last part is your epidermis. So this part is your epidermis. This is your dermis. This is your subcutaneous tissue. Subcutaneous area, sorry. So you can see here that the blood supply, the blood normal, the blood vessels are coming here. Let's talk about the arteries first. The blood uh, the vessels are coming out here. You can see them. These arteries give branches. All right. So if somebody is asking you, they give main branches. So the skin is su actually supplied by two plexes. So these arteries come over here and join together and anastomose here with each other. So they form one plexus, which is called cutaneous plexus or deeper plexus. It's nothing, just a mashup of arteries and veins. Number one is this plexus. The second plexus, this plexus is formed between your subcutaneous and dermis. Between both plexus, our cutaneous plexus is formed or deeper. The second plexus is formed between dermis and epidermis, which is called subpapillary plexus or superficial plexus. Between these two plexus, there is an anastomosis between your arteries and veins, which is called glomus bodies. This remember this one. This is very important. The glomus bodies. So that's it. Very simple. You see the artery, the arterial supply. Arteries are coming, giving up branches. The main these branches, uh, these arterial branches form two plexes. There is cutaneous deeper and the subpapillary plexus. And there is another anastomosis which is called the glomus bodies. So the cutaneous plexus or the this deeper plexus actually supply your fatty tissues and your the hair follicles and the sebaceous glands and your sweet, uh, sweat glands. So these plexus uh, supply all these sweat glands, hair follicles, your, your fatty layers, this is your fatty outside, you can see in yellow color. And uh, as we go downward, we see that epidermis and uh, dermis, between there, there are other plexus which, for, which supply the upper layer. But in this section, we'll be talking about the glomus bodies because glomus bodies play an important role in the thermoregulation. How does it, is, is it maintain or help in the thermoregulation? We'll be using this diagram to explain it. Just consider it that way. This is your <coughs> deep plexus, right? I have uh, shown it here. This is your deep plexus. Just consider I have taken a part of deep plexus and I'm explaining on it. So this is your deep plexus. This is your glomus bodies. You can see out here. This is your glomus bodies. I have taken a section out of it and glomus bodies. This so superficial or that one, the last diagram is your subpapillary plexus. This one, this is your subpapillary plexus. What happens at the glomus bodies or glomus bodies is nothing. It's just an anastomosis like other anastomosis, anastomosis between your artery, artery and the venous. What happens here? The thermoregulation actually occurs. How does that occur? Just be with me. The artery is kind of bringing up the blood from the from the main arteries, other arteries bringing from downward. And uh, as it goes the, the, uh, in that direction, if your body temperature is high, we have to, as this goes downward, it gives uh, arteriole and finally this, this is artery gives arteriole and arteriole gives capillaries. You know that, right? Artery, arterioles and then capillaries and capillaries drain to your ve uh, venules and finally into your veins. Remember, this arteriole when when you your body temperature is very high this the sphinct there are sphincters sphincters are muscular rings these sphincters actually open up to allow more blood from arteries to get into this area and to lose heat from the body so if you're if you're if you're feeling hot the temper the uh, or more artery the sphincters are going to open under the nerve nerve supply nerve control and more sphincters are going to open or allow or loosen up and more blood will go through these capillaries and more heat is lost in this uh, in this section but when you are feeling cold these sphincters kind of close the kind of constrict or close or allow less blood flow through the capillaries so blood will actually shunt straight towards the veins without following this capillary path or you can say you can say this path is arterio arterio 
arterioles to venous diversion or arterial venous shunt you can say this diagram arterial venous shunt because in the cold condition when you are feeling cold you don't want to lose a lot of heat from your blood so blood directly don't go won't go through this this path the capillary path because these sphincter would be closed and blood will move it will partially close all, all the tightly closed and the blood will flow from this direction to preserve the heat you can see uh, this is it regarding the blood supply of skin very easy nothing uh, to worry about that's it and uh, please make sure to keep uh, visit our website that is www.tigerschooling.com and keep visiting thank you